Good morning, everyone. I'm coming here from the banks of the Willamette River, high up in Mary S. Young Park, and I'm sure you saw by the title. I'm asking the question this morning, why is there so much war in the world? Doesn't it feel that we're always in a perpetual state of war? That when one ends, another one begins? Is this because of greed? Is it lack of resources? Is it lack of understanding of other people's cultures? Or are we just plain evil? I think I've come up with an answer that will not disregard those other three. But let's explore some of the history of war before I give you my shocking and somewhat radical take on its possibility. So when we think of war, we think of World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and all the wars of the 20th century that killed over 100 million people. Or we may think further back to the Civil War, or the War of 1812, or the Revolutionary War, or the French and Indian War. These are modern wars. But you have to understand, it goes back to the conquests of Jerusalem, from the Christian Crusaders, such as the Knights Templar, to the Muslim Crusaders, and even further back to Rome's conquest of Europe through the sword. Now, was this for lack of resources? There's more than enough to go around. Is it for greed? Well, yes, always. People need to feed their families and other people just want to have more than everyone else. But there's another reason and it's quite shocking and somewhat radical to think about. As the sun shines down on me, I guess I can give my reason for the perpetual state of war. So there's gonna be Bible literalists out there who believe every word of the Bible, every word. And this is where it's gonna be shocking. We all know in the book of Exodus, Moses brought the Jews out of Egypt. In chapter 14 is when they cross the Red Sea, even though they never crossed the Red Sea. The original Hebrew text was they crossed Yam Sup, which means Sea of Reeds or Reed Sea which is one of the smaller lakes just outside of Ramesses, not the Red Sea. Also, in the Bible, it states that a strong east wind blew overnight, parting the sea. Now this is actually scientifically possible. It's called wind setback, and it does occur. They've witnessed it in Lake Erie, and even the Nile River. But that's besides the point, and that's a story for another video. Anyway, it's chapter 15 that states the obvious. In chapter 15, it's after the sea was parted and they crossed to the other side and the Egyptians had all drowned in the waters. Moses leads the children of Israel in a song. And in chapter 15, verse 3, the original Hebrew text says, Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. So what does that mean? It means that the Abrahamic God that over 4 billion people worship today is actually 
the God of war. Could this be why we are always in a perpetual state of war? We've been worshiping a war God. And on that point, I just want to make one other thing clear. It's another question. Ask yourself, how come Yeshua, who you may know as Jesus, which is a derogatory term for him, but we'll cover that in another video. How come Yeshua described a different creator than the creator of the Old Testament. Think about that. In the Old Testament, Yahweh would tell his people to go out and kill everybody. Men, women, children, hell, even their animals. If they opposed the Israelites, the Jews of the time. And this is nothing against the modern day Jewish people. Nothing against them. But in the New Testament, it was all loving, love your neighbor. It was, it's a completely different figure, is it not? Contemplate that. And I'll come back with another video again soon right now I want to go out and enjoy the creation instead of going and sitting in a pew and learning about it but till then love you all I'll see you again very soon bye